Hi there, um, this is Francis Turner from ThreatSop. I'm a security researcher involved in detecting uh, stuff related to um, Russian sanctions compliance or general, general sanctions compliance. Um, and one of the questions that we've been asked a lot is what are the elements that you need to make sure that you stay in compliance with OFAC and other sanctions programs? Um, the really simple thing is, uh, for the most part, is don't do business with entities that have been sanctioned. Well, the problem is, of course, that these entities uh, don't always, you know, they, they lie. You know, surprisingly enough, they want to buy stuff or sell stuff to you. They don't want you to know that it's them that have been sanctioned, so therefore they will lie. Uh, one of the things that we do at ThreatStop is help you uh, make sure that you comply, or at least that you're doing, making your best effort to comply. Um, best effort to comply is a really important thing. Um, everybody understands the US government, the EU, and all these other sanctions enforcing regimes understand that you know these guys are going to lie about their sanction, about their you know, they're going to have set up subsidiaries and so on that are, you know, pretending not to be them. However, and if you do business with that and you are tricked, then it's not your fault. But on the other hand, if you do business with them and you knew about it, then it is your fault and you will be in a whole boatload of trouble. So one of the things that we can do at ThreatStop is help you uh, to avoid all the obvious things of doing business with potentially sanctioned entities. So for example, uh, we have a, a system that allows you to, to not communicate with um, IP addresses or domains controlled by Russia. So that means that implies you know, the whole of the Russian Federation, basically, if somebody comes from that IP address space, you can't talk to it, or it can't talk to you. That is a very simple and surprisingly good way of saying, hey, I am now not doing business with Russia. Um, there are some some additional things that you want to do too, like for example, since uh, Russia has invaded Ukraine and has occupied parts of Ukraine, uh, those occupied parts of Ukraine are also uh, under under the same set of sanctions, and you want to not do business with them too. Uh, that's something that I worked on um, last year after, well, actually a little bit beforehand too, but particularly after the Russians invaded Ukraine last year, uh, to figure out. What parts of Ukraine, what IP, what, what IP addresses and so on that are located in Ukraine are actually controlled by Russia and which ones are not controlled by Russia. And so with ThreatStop, you can be sure, and it's updated, well, actually daily at the moment, but potentially as time goes on, it could be hourly if the things change that round, round rapidly. Um, which IP addresses, which 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 bits of the internet are in fact under Russian control in, in Ukraine and which bits are under Ukrainian control. So which bits you could talk to and which bits you can't. And that, that is one of the elements that will really help um, you prove to the US government or whoever, whatever other organization that comes down here and says, we think you've been doing business with Russia to say, no, I haven't. Another one is that we have implemented um, in conjunction with a company called Five By, um, ways to identify sanctioned uh, banks, sanctioned financial institutions, sanctioned um, import export companies, weapons companies, all sorts of things like that, that are also, um, they're, they're sanctioned, um, but they may not obviously be part of Russia. So they're not in the Russian IP address space, they're in Kyrgyzstan or Cyprus, or I don't know, Hong Kong, or all sorts of other places. Um, they are, however, companies or in some cases, potentially individuals, but normally companies that are 100% owned and controlled by Russian companies that have been specifically sanctioned by the US or OFAC or whichever other sanctions program. And because they've been sanctioned by that, you shouldn't do business with them. And again, this is one of the things that we can do to make to help you show that you did, you made a best effort to uh, be compliant is that we have the, the information of these subsidiary companies, these subsidiary um, subsidiary entities and so on that are you know, disguised. They, they don't necessarily have the names Russia or Spurbank or whatever in the name. They, they're called something that sounds completely legitimate and doesn't sound particularly Russian. They'll be called like Crystal, Crystal, Crystal Diamonds Hong Kong, for example, or something like that. And 
you would think Crystal Diamonds Hong Kong is just a jewelry company in Hong Kong. Well, it is a jewelry company in Hong Kong, but it's a jewelry company in Hong Kong that is 100% owned by a sanctioned Russian um, diamond diamond exporter. So therefore, it is also something that you shouldn't do business with. Now, diamonds are probably not for everybody. Not everybody's going to do business with diamond companies, but there are plenty of other similar uh, companies in you know electronics. Um, computers, uh, finance of various sorts, you name it, oil, natural uh, exports of, and imports of all sorts of things where the same, the same applies. And you want to be able to be sure that you can uh, say, you can stand up to the, to the OFAC or whichever inspector that shows up and says, yes, I did my best by saying, look, I was blocking um, traffic to and from uh, these particular additional entities, not just Russia itself.